Shelly is calling it Shelly Motion 2, but it's definitely more than just that. Hello guys, there is a number 2 on this product, meaning there was a Shelly Motion 1, something that I covered in this video there. And it's been a couple of years since that actual launch and I really like that device apart from two things. It was big and it was pretty expensive. In case you wonder, I still have my Shelly Motion and still works okay and I only charge it twice since, which is testament to how long it lasted on the battery, considering that this is a Wi-Fi connected PR sensor. Now today we have a successor, which is Shelly Motion 2, and this device is, well, everything really. For a long time I've been actually asking for something like a node device which you can use in a single room that will collect as much environmental data as possible and I don't know why we don't have such device yet. I mean it would be nice that you don't have to buy several sensors to provide you with temperature, humidity, motion sensing, contact, etc, etc. It would be so much beneficial to spend a little bit more money and have a single device that gives all of that information to your home automation. And Shelly comes really, really close to basically designing that with Shelly Motion 2. The first thing you, that you're going to notice is that the Shelly Motion 2 is much smaller than the previous device, which is great because given a choice between two devices, you're probably going to end up selecting this one on your wall rather than the bigger one. So let's take a closer look at the sensor itself and then we're gonna talk all the sensor data that you can extract from it and use in your whole automation. And if you are not a biggest fan of cloud, stick around because it's Shelly. It's gonna be interesting either way. There isn't much inside the box. We obviously have the Shelly Motion 2, which is a battery operated. Now it has a built-in battery, which is 6,500 milliamp aero hours, which is supposed to last you for about a year. As this is fresh from production line, I don't know if it's gonna last a year, but I've been using it for over a week and it's still at 100%, which is, which is good. It's a Wi-Fi device and I think they're using the same kind of magic that they've done with the original Shelly Motion and using some sort of low power processing to get you connected, especially that device is constantly active on your network so it just doesn't go into a sleep mode really. Thankfully it's 21st century so we also see USB Type-C for charging and that's pretty much it for the device. The only disappointing thing is that a mounting bracket which, although clips nicely to the sensor itself, I find the resistance of that wheel, positioning wheel, to be slightly too low. Despite having two screws at the back, I'd really have to crank them all the way in uh, to have the proper resistance to keep the Shelly uh, Motion 2 in position without, you know, twisting it. Because the sensor itself, well, it actually has a bit of weight to it. So why are we here? It's a motion sensor, what's the big deal? Well, actually it's not. It's not just motion sensor because it will provide you with obviously a motion sensor data, but on top of it, you're also gonna get a temperature readout, vibration and light sensitivity. So it's a nice environmental package for your room and you'll be able to extract that information and use it in your automation, whether it's a sh via Shelly Cloud or DIY. So let's talk about individual aspects of this sensor in detail and see what's what. So Shelly Motion as motion sensor. What do we have? We have a PRR motion sensor which has a minimum timeout of uh, 1 minute up to 1440 minutes in total. I know there are other sensors with a lower timeouts like for example Zigbee based Agara P1 that I covered in this video but it's a Wi-Fi sensor and a minute, well, it's respectable. To trim the motion triggers, we have a couple of options as well. I do not have any pads to test against the pads, whether I can just exclude them or include them in the motion sensing, but it comes with 255 levels of sensitivity. You can narrow it down by level of light if you don't want to trigger, for example, at night or something like that. And uh, you have settings to um, define how many motion triggers takes before the trigger is actually issued as a notification. And while notifications of the motion are very quick and you'll be notified almost instantly on your Shelly Cloud app, 
there are no any settings to check the logs of motion events in the past so you will have to log it somehow yourself if you want to keep track of that. Next up is using the sensor to log the temperature. It would be nice to have an option with humidity as well for rooms like kitchen or bathroom just in case you want to control humidity in those rooms but well, having a temperature sensor is good enough to control the heating in the house and that's what is really important. You can have two in one, somewhere in the corner and it will report the temperature back to you. Now, the temperature is updated every around five minutes unless the, there is a sudden drop in the temperature or sudden increase in the temperature and then the temperature is reported after 30 seconds from that event. You can control how big is that sudden change, so the minimum 0.5 degree, and you can also calibrate your temperature sensor by introducing offsets. Now, if you in the US and you would like to have temperature displayed in Fahrenheit, there is an option for that as well. The current temperature and the latest reading is displayed in a device card. Now, historical data is stored also in Shelly Cloud, however, this data is averaged and aggregate it to one hour entry, which means it's okay if you're just looking back, trying to find out what was temperature like yesterday or week ago. However, if you want to use that data to figure out how efficient is your heating system, there is just not enough frequency. There are ways around it because Shelly Cloud comes with options to submit that data to third party via webhook, so MQTT, I'm going to talk about it in a second. But as it is, this is the information that you have an access to and I wish it was slightly more granular, especially in the like, last seven days or something like that. That would be ideal. After that, the data can be aggregated to less frequent. It isn't just motion and temperature because we have access to brightness. Now, brightness is reported in looks from zero to 100,000 of looks, which is a very, very bright day, like today. And all of that's going to be available to you as three triggers, bright, dark and twilight. Uh, on top of that, you can customize what are the values for individual settings, so the sensor always work the way you want. Nice, thank you very much. And while there isn't any log of that information anyway in Shirley Cloud, again, you can use either webhooks, MQTT or REST to send that data to, for example, Node-RED, Home Assistant or Influx with Grafana to store it yourself and display it the way you want. Obviously, the current information about the brightness levels will be present in your Shelly Cloud. You just don't have an access to historical data. Lastly, we have a vibration sensor, which is also dubbed as a tamper sensor, which means if you're using these PRs as an alarm, you're gonna get notified when someone, you know, grabs one and try to remove it to prevent notifications from happening. That can also double as maybe an earthquake alarm, because you can actually customize how sensitive that sensor is. So while I don't have many earthquakes in UK, you could experiment uh, with that, especially if you live in places that are earthquake prone and you sleep very, very deeply, just like me. I could probably sleep through earthquake and not even notice that. Just like before, you're gonna get notified and you can use that as a trigger in your automation app, but there is no historical data or access to a log of that. So if you want to get that log, you probably want to set up a webhook for this. What I really like about Shelly Cloud that it gives you an option. You don't really have to use Shelly Cloud at all because the device comes with a web interface that allows you to I, A, configure the device itself, B, access the current data, and C, export that data to your Node-RED instance or Hope Assistance instance via MQTT, REST, via webhooks. There's a lot of different options that you can take advantage of. The triggers alone will span from the motions at night or twilight or during the daytime or different temperature ranges and you can even issue different triggers based on battery levels just in case you want a custom notification when you're running low on a battery and the device needs charging. All of that is available without even logging into the cloud so if you value the privacy aspect of uh, IoT devices Shelly has got you covered. Now if you just want to use the sensor in a more traditional way Shelly provides you with skills for Google Home and Alexa so you'll be able to report that temperature to your ecosystems and query it via voice assistant. Very handy, very useful and I know that a lot of you is going to take advantage of that.
The Shelly app, as usual, is very practical in its use. You can assign the temperature sensor to specific rooms and get that quick information about what's going on in your ecosystem. But the best part about it is that you actually don't have to commit to the bright side or the dark side. You can take advantage of both because the Shelly Cloud allows you to issue the webhook, so talk via web requests with third party like Home Assistant and Node-RED while being connected to Shelly Cloud. This is the best of both worlds because you can choose how you interact in a cloud and still feed that data to your custom instance of a DIY home automation server that you're currently using. So honestly, each time Shelly releases a new device, I'm super excited because I know I'll have a choice between using it via cloud or deploying it locally and using it that way. And this time is no different. The last thing you probably want to know is pricing. Now, Shelly Motion 2 costs $39.90, excluded VAT, so just over 40 euros. Now, it might seem expensive at first, but if you do the calculation how much you would pay for a PR, plus light sensor, plus temperature sensor, let's say that the vibration sensor is free, you're still gonna probably be ahead, especially if you want something that works with custom automations. So guys, do let me know, what would you prefer? Would you rather go for a single device that has all that environmental data and reports it back from the room? Or do you prefer buying individual sensors and scattering it around the room to your preference and having individual devices reporting uh, their data back to your automation server? As for now, you know what's going on. I do not have a posting schedule, so if you want to know what's next, well, you know how YouTube works, I'm not going to explain you that. But I have a couple of social media listed down below, so do check them out, keep in touch and start a conversation with me. So big thanks for watching and I'll see you next time, probably with something new from Shelly. Like this, temperature sensor with the e-ink display. Take care, bye.